grace to witness your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of justice and peace. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth for your glory and for the good of all. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us as we remember those who have died and grant us with them to share in your eternal glory. Give us true repentance. Give us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives to your word. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty. Holy immortal one. Have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. God speaks to Noah and his sons after they have left the ark and establishes the rainbow as a sign of his covenant. God will preserve the world, not destroy it. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the reading. Let us join in reading Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9, found on page 4 of your bulletin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. 
All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Our son, Chris, who works for Google, asked me this past Friday if I knew why astronauts use only Google software. And I told him that I didn't. And he responded, that's because spaceships don't have windows. I don't have a, hi Chris, good morning, hope you're happy now. This morning I'd like to talk with you about wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences can be large and small. They can be trivial or deadly. They always involve our feeling that we are alone in a place of desolation by ourselves fearful of everything and everyone around us, having no idea how we will survive. A wilderness experience can be the unexpected bill, the unexpected diagnosis. In every movie about cancer, note how the person receiving the diagnosis no longer hears or understands what the doctor is saying because she has just moved into a wilderness experience. Depression that makes us feel we are truly alone with no way out. Addiction of one kind or another. Our wilderness experience of COVID. Our wilderness experience of the chaos of January 6th in Washington our wilderness experiences of so many things in our lives. Sometimes it may seem to us 
that we don't enter wilderness experiences singularly. We're always in them. Our wilderness experiences can be individual to us. They can be community-oriented or societal. We put ourselves or allow others to put ourselves into a wilderness. We seem so far from God. Has God forgotten about us? What can we do? Our reading from Mark's gospel gives us the path in which we can trust this Lent. In the Bible, wilderness can mean an uncultivated area into which a shepherd will take his flock. Think the green pastures of the 23rd Psalm. Wilderness, much more frequently, however, means a place devoid of life, of sustenance, of hope. Imagine the world of Mark's gospel. The people are in the midst of their own wilderness experience and have been for generations. Their COVID is Roman domination and callousness. Their January 6th is Herodian callousness and greed. The inequality not only of their culture, but more desperately of temple worship, now consisting of a spider's web of laws and regulations and restrictions and ritual, which they see engendered by the priests and which must be followed slavishly. They have no hope, no sustenance. They are alone. The covenant which we hear God so clearly and powerfully state to Noah seems to be gone. So what can God do? He's promised that he will not wipe the world clean and start over again. Seven times he says that. He set his bow as the symbol to himself and more importantly to us that we can trust that the flood will never happen again. So what can he do? God sends himself into the world to us in the form of Jesus to create a new world, a new world for all people, especially those on the margin, not just the rich and powerful. The baby of Bethlehem today, this morning, truly becomes the Son of God. And what happens? We see Jesus driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness immediately after having been baptized, immediately after hearing the voice of God coming through the heavens, torn apart, stating, you are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here, into the wilderness, seemingly alone, without sustenance, separated from all others. Jesus is tempted by Satan. He is surrounded by wild animals. At the same time, and this is the part for almost my entire life, I've overlooked in this section of Mark's gospel. At the same time, angels waited on him. Jesus is not alone. God is with him. Jesus emerges from his wilderness fully focused on the path before him, proclaiming the good news of God. The kingdom of God has come near, promising us that God's love overarches every aspect of creation and that through repentance we are forgiven and remain the focus of that love. Why is this gospel the first, the reading for the first Sunday in this Lent? What does it give us that we can hang on to? What does it promise that we can take into, through, and out of the next six weeks and our ongoing wilderness experiences. 
The wilderness experience is that time of testing and tribulation when we find out who we are and how much we believe. When we find ourselves tempted by envy, pride, callousness, and ego, surrounded by the wild beasts of worry, fear, and consternation. And isn't Lent a smaller version of this? Isn't it a time of self-discipline and testing? All of this an effort to burn away the dust and detritus of life so that our hearts are open to God and that we can find those thin places where and when God meets and kisses us. Ultimately, Lent teaches us that although we will always be tempted, although we will always sin, we will always be attended, not just by angels, but by God himself. After all, the God who created Eden also created the wilderness. This God, in grace and love, will meet us unceasingly in our wilderness experiences, large and small, trivial and cataclysmic. To quote the Christian missionary Amy Carmichael, bare heights of loneliness, a wilderness whose burning winds sweep over glowing sands. What are they to God? Even there, he can refresh us. Even there, he can renew us. If God can do this for us, surely, truly, and without fear, we can do the same for others. We know that our wilderness experiences, whatever they are, just like Lent, will end not on the cross of Calvary, but in that glorious light pouring forth from Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. Let us use this Lent to prepare ourselves, to test ourselves, to find all those ways we can become the reflection of that light for all of God's creation. Amen. Please stand and join me in saying together the creed of our faith found on the bottom of page five in your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
We are baptized to lift up day by day all the needy world to God. Let us pray for all who are in need, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church that all who have found God's promise in the waters of baptism may enter gladly into the testing time of Lent, we pray, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church that the catechumens called to be ready for the Easter baptism may walk with us these 40 days and know both Satan's testing and God's reign, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For our world, that all living creatures may find goodness on the earth, our home, where life and death may both be God's blessing, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For deliverance, that in the wastelands made by our greed and indifference, we may fast from evil and grow hungry for justice, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For ourselves in this assembly, that we may strain forward toward Easter, caring for our sick and needy, remembering our dead, believing in our every deed, the good news, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Betty Jo, Sharon, Sarah, Jean, Lisa, Linda, Hank Hankins, Pete, Bobby, Kathy, Jana, Summer, Stacy, Debbie, Gay, Diane, Mary Lynn, Nancy, and those we name now either silently or aloud. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Bob Stevenson and Sharon Billingsley, Paula Sterling, Talbert and Meg Takahama, and their Ohana. We pray for the nation and all in authority, protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places and those in harm's way and especially Ed Fitzpatrick. We pray for all those who have died, especially Gabrielle Batzer Wong, Roy Gephardt, Lulu Kalua, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God of wild beasts and of angels, of waters and wilderness, remember us. Remember all whom we remember. Remember the covenant you made with every living creature, for that is our bond with you now and forever. Amen. Good morning, again. And uh, do, uh, does anybody have any birthdays or anniversaries or thank offerings? I will mention that Elliot Batzer's birthday is on the 23rd, on Tuesday. Might be a, an especially nice time to remember him as his mother has just recently passed away. There will be a, by the way, private service for her on Thursday at 11, but you will be invited to uh, tune in and watch uh, via live stream if you would like. And then Betty Jo Harris's is on the next day, the 24th, and Meg Takahama is on the 25th. I know that uh, all our thank offerings go to Episcopal Relief and Development. Along with that, we also give some money from our Outreach Endowment to Episcopal Relief and Development 
every year, and you yourself can go to Episcopal Relief and Development online and send money to them. I know that their attention right this minute is on Texas. And so if you would like to help in any way, um, you may go online to Episcopal Relief and Development or place something in our offering plates uh, that is earmarked for that. Let's join together in the community prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we wish people happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. Haolila now aho mai kai. And as far as announcements go, I know that two of you are from the Thursday morning Bible study. We can talk via email and decide if I can be there at 10 and start us off, and then you really don't, don't need me to, to continue on with the study. Uh, so we can talk about that. You may want to be home at 11 to watch, um, uh, to join in the worship service for Gabrielle's funeral as well. Um, we're doing pretty well on gathering to gather minimal, minim, minimal tech help, <laughs> even more than minimal tech help. But if you would like to help us, we are always very willing to accept help. We had a fabulous work day yesterday. Thank you to everybody who participated. And three or four folks got started on our pretty complicated play set. They're not done but they're actually going to continue on uh, this afternoon, weather permitting, after the second service, and, uh, and until we get it finished. So we're working on that. And the vestry is pretty excited about that because we picked a play set that we thought that a lot of kids uh, would like. Um, parents had a whole lot of input on that. Um, I sort of put these words in Tom's mouth here, the 75th anniversary polo shirts. I only have five more women's shirts. I have several adult and kid 25th anniversary caps. Rush to get in line. Tom's over there at the end of the service. Or be sure to write immediately because you do not want to miss out on that. Oh, there he is. Phil is back there, but now Tom is also back there. Uh, Camp Mokalea, you can still sign up for staycation weekends and also save the date for our family camp. I remember somebody asked me after annual meeting, are we really honestly having a family camp? We will either have a family camp or opportunity for a number of people to go up for staycation weekend. Also save the date uh, Sunday, April 25th, the Sunday before Family Camp Weekend. The bishop will be visiting. It's an opportunity for confirmation, also an opportunity for baptism if you haven't been baptized but you would like to be confirmed and the bishop can do that. And that will be yet another 75th anniversary celebration. That will be celebrating the anniversary of our first worship service. Excuse, oh, and wear a shirt on that day. Is that what you're saying? Yes, okay. On the back, the whole back page is Lenten Discipline Possibilities. One of your Lenten disciplines could be to read all the way through this. Uh, the Last Week is a great book by Marcus Borg and Dominic Crossan. If you are interested, uh, come today at 
815, talk with me about it. We'll decide if that is a good time in between services to have a session for the last week. We'll go to the parish hall. I think that's the best place to go. And I've got copies. If you really would like to do it online, if anybody would like to do it online via Zoom, let me know that. We'll, we'll work that out. Episcopal 101 would be a perfect thing to have for anybody, anybody, but especially if you are thinking about confirmation. We have two baptisms, by the way, scheduled for Easter Sunday, and I believe one other one coming up as well. Community disciplines, Preston can coordinate these if you have any questions about them. There's some great suggestions down there for families. Uh, number one, uh, not four, daily devotions. Two, uh, one of the daily offices. All of these are prayer book things. Oh, and then three, of course. The, this just sounds like Preston, doesn't it? Coming to St. C's each Sunday without arguing. There we go. Families, you're very in, in welcomed and invited to do that. Uh, personal possibilities, also, of course, the daily devotions or offices um, and other kinds of things uh, that you could do include giving up technology for a Sunday or another day of the week. Write or call someone with whom you have not been in touch for a while. I did that Friday. I went to see Hollis and Ethel Maxson. I brought them one of our nice little pew cushions that she was eyeing at one point and wondered where they had gone when she came to visit recently. And I took them a copy of the annual meeting report. So um, all kinds of disciplines. And you can also, of course, uh, create any that of, of your own that are meaningful to you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, you were tempted in every way as we are, yet you did not sin. 
By your grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and live no longer for ourselves alone, but for you who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power Lord, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Christopher and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Amen. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those at home or here who have not received, please join me in your spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now celebrated, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all the love of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live in you and may you live in me, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. And may the blessing of God who sends us into this holy Lent give you peace and be with you during this time and his blessings, the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
be with you and remain with you always. Amen.